Joe in Washington writes to me and he says, in May of 2022, the issue of Copper Magazine, and for those of you that don't know, we, we publish at PS Audio, we publish a, a magazine, a free magazine, publishes once every two weeks. It's filled with music. There's no ads. It's just great articles freely given out to our community by great writers about music, about um, oh, mostly about bands and things, but it, it's a great magazine. It's called Copper Magazine. It's online and it's free and there's no ads and there's no shameless plugs like, like I do for my books and things. <laughs> so if you haven't seen Copper Magazine, you, you, sh you should. It's, it's a great magazine. Anyway, uh, in that magazine, there are descriptions of uh, equipment at Expona that are orders of magnitudes more expensive than anything I'm familiar with. I'm certain you must have seen and heard this kind of stuff at shows. What gives? Is it just jewelry or is there really some aspect of musicality that these super expensive rigs achieve that PS Audio Gear does not? Lambos and Maseratis and even pedestrian Porsches all can achieve speeds that are unusable except under the most controlled conditions. So despite or perhaps, perhaps because of their expense, I'd call them jewelry. Is that what's going on? Well, there's always that element of jewelry, but let's take it back a little bit because most high-end audio equipment that is ultra expensive isn't expensive because of the jewelry, but it has jewelry because it's ultra expensive. So that might sound like some uh, 1984 <laughs> double talk. <laughs> so let me explain it. And I'm not speaking for everybody, but we make a $30,000 pair of loudspeakers. And that's really expensive. Now, there are 650, a million dollar pair of loudspeakers that are just nuts, right? Our $30,000 pair of loudspeakers is, is there, like all PS Audio products, it is completely representative of what's inside of it. Not what it costs us to build it, not anything else, but we take the bill of materials, here's what it costs us to make this thing, and we multiply it by a multiplier that helps keep us in business, and that's the price. And so you know that if you buy a $30,000 piece of equipment from PS Audio, or you buy a thousand dollar piece of equipment from PS Audio, it is a direct reflection of what it cost us to build that. So, i.e., the stuff inside is worth that money, okay? Now, the jewelry part, the finish and the execution form factor and all of that of a $30,000 loudspeaker or a $30,000 product is expected to be of higher quality than one of a thousand because yeah, you, you could take a, a 450 Hemi whatever motor and put it into a, a, you know, a junk car and, and beat almost anybody on the road, but it would look like crap and nobody would be interested, right? So form follows function and quality. So that's kind of where the jewelry goes into. But for the most part, I would say for my fellow manufacturers that they follow the same sort of routine that we do. I mean, I look at uh, my buddy Dan Agostino. He makes gorgeous look, it looks like a Swiss watch. And he puts a lot of money into that jewelry that isn't necessary, but it is aesthetically beautiful and pleasing and the stuff he uses inside it's expensive it, it's it's worth the money for what's inside now i don't completely agree with dan you know on the outsides because we don't spend that much money on the outsides we make them worth their price and all that so we we don't agree on that but eh, we're you know we're 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 splitting hairs so i think an answer to your question for the vast majority of high-end audio products, the ones from legitimate companies, they justify their price for what it costs them to build it. So, hope that answers your question. 
All right, thanks. Bye.